<laughs> it is good to be in the house of the Lord. It is good to be able to delight ourselves in Him. Hallelujah. I pray that this is not, uh, just as the norm for you. I mean, it should be, my goodness, it should even be better than this to be the norm. You can be seated. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, you know, sin is a poison. It'll alter your personality. It will. God created you for praise and for rejoicing and thanksgiving. Oh, man, what it be, what is, it's so wonderful to be around people that are happy. It's so delightful. It just makes your day. Hallelujah. Can you imagine spending a whole day with the Holy Ghost? There's not going to be one, I tell you right now, there's not going to be one sad moment, I'm telling you. Jesus actually already, really, in many respects, you could say he's already cried all the tears that need to be cried. It's true. He's already poured out all the blood that needs to be shed. He's already offered all the sacrifice that ever needs to be paid. I mean, you know, praise God we get to be called into the fellowship of His suffering. But reality of it is, people, I mean, the, re the norm of our lives should be such an overwhelming joy and thanksgiving. And my, what a light that begins to, to shine in our life when we begin to allow the Spirit of the Lord to take us and mentor us into the ways of God. You know, I could spend my life just talking about Father's heart, His will, His desire, His passion that the life and ministry of Jesus be revealed, that it be reproduced and be revealed, that all the power of heaven and all the glory of heaven should be made manifest in our life because Christ Jesus is in us, because the Father dwells in us, you know, and because the Holy Ghost dwells in us. But, you know, this morning, I'm, I'm going to kind of back out of that just a little bit and just kind of talk to you about some foundational things if you want to be successful in what God's planned for your life. <laughs> and, you know, I would say that the crescendo is every dimension of Christ Jesus' life being made manifest in us and his ministry being made manifest in us. And we better know where we're going, otherwise we're going to walk in the wrong direction. I hear people talk about success and, and they're walking in the wrong direction. When I'm talking about success, I'm walking in the direction of being able to lay hold on all the beauty and the splendor that Father has made available for me in Christ Jesus. The terms of the covenant... You know, the Lord says it, the terms of the covenant, you live out my life and I'll live in you. I mean, that's just the terms of the covenant. Wow. I mean, what a command, you know. When we get so captivated by all the do's instead of all the don'ts, listen, there's far more do's in God than there are don'ts. In, in, the, in the Garden of Eden, there was only one don't and all the rest were do's. And, and it's like man's fixated on the don'ts. Give me a break. And it's nothing's changed. People are fixated on the don'ts. And if you get fixated on all the, th rather on all the things that God has made for us, made available to us, you look at Jesus as the author and finisher of your faith instead of you being it, or people around you being it. You look at the reality that having begun in the Holy Spirit, you made perfect by Him. I mean, all of a sudden, a whole new realm of living begins to take place. The burden is off of you, praise God. And now you can look under the author and finisher of your faith. You can know that the one who began a good work in you is going to be completed. And then you begin to understand a little bit more about the communion and the fellowship. You know, I, I love communion and, you know, I was so blessed that everything was here and available on, uh, on Wednesday night because you never know when I'm going to do communion. I love communion. There's some bread there too, praise God. I love communion because it shows me how the, how the fellowship began. It shows me my holiness, my righteousness. It shows me my access. It shows me everything that Father has made available to me to make me completely holy and acceptable unto Him. And having begun like that, that's how I continue on. See, I got the blood of Jesus Christ that continually cleanses me and washes me because I'm walking in the light as He's in the light. It's a beautiful thing. People look at that almost in, as though it were uh, somewhat of a, of a, in conflict because you think, well, you know, if you're walking in the light as He is in the light, maybe you don't need the blood of Jesus Christ to be cleansing you. Oh, no, 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 that's, that's not the way it works. It's all of our fellowship. It's all of our righteousness. It's all of our glory. It's why I can live free from condemnation. It's why I, lived out of, I can live free from sorrow and shame. It's why I can live in the joy. It's why I can live in acceptance. It's why I can live in the fullness because there's nothing that can alienate me from God or make me feel like I'm a stranger or distant from Him or not His beloved child. I mean, he valued me with something so pricey. And that pricey and valuable thing goes way beyond gold and silver. It's the blood of Jesus Christ. It's the blood of the living God who has made flesh for your, your sake and for my sake so he could come wash our feet. Huh? 
so he could come minister his life to us. I mean, more than wash our feet. I mean, to minister his life to us, but to, to think about washing our feet. I mean, that's the, lowest, that's the lowest job of the lowest servant. And yet he was so honored to do that. You know, he, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the chain, and is set down on the right hand of the majesty on high, expecting till all of our enemies, his enemies, our enemies, are made as footstool. And when you begin to embrace this, you're talking about, woohoo! you're talking about a joy life, a joy-filled life. I want to just bring your attention to a couple of verses of Scripture about how you can be successful. And when I'm talking about success, I'm talking about success financially, I'm talking about success spiritually, I'm talking about success physically, I'm talking about success materially in every dimension of life. Now I'm going to say this, and I sandwich those two in between, because I think that on, on both ends, the finances and the material, because I think that a lot of times uh, folks are really, they're really captivated by financial success and material success. The reality of it is, is spiritual success and physical success is far more important than the Father. And so we know that we get to prosper and be in health, hallelujah, even as our soul prospers. Say soul, soul. hallelujah. And now once you understand that the word is misunderstood, it means your entire life. Soul means your own entire life. Nefesh in the Hebrew language or suke in, in, the, in the Greek language it is referring to your entire life, the entire you, the entire being. And that's why you have many translators like in the King James and other translations that will actually translate both of those words, life, many times. It's the whole you. It's the whole you. Amen. It's every part of you. Somebody said, well, is it a spiritual dimension? Yeah, but you know, reality of it is, is God created us every bit from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet. You know, the tips of our fingers, he created us spiritual beings. Hallelujah. I can't help it that, that you know, Satan gave us over to the tyrannical reign of the powers of darkness. Praise God for the King of Kings who came and delivered us. Praise God for our Savior, our Deliverer. See, I have a Savior who delivered me from the tyrannical reign of darkness and he didn't leave me there. Praise God. He didn't say, you're free. You know, stay in bondage, you're free. You know, he came and he delivered me. He's a better than Moses. Praise God. I'm telling you right now. Moses just didn't hang out with them and, you know, just talk to them every day as they're in the mud pits of Goshen about how free they are. Free by faith. Unseen freedom. Freedom by position. Freedom. Come on now. Listen, when God sees this, the sun sets free. It's really, truly free. Papa, in this freedom, has brought us an abundant life. And I want you to understand, when you don't encounter this and we don't engage in it, I'm going to tell you what happens. There is a void in your life and the satanic realm will come and fill that void. Understand this. It's a key to success. Understand, when you're not delighting yourself in the Lord, there is a void in your life. There is a, you, Father made us to, be, to have fun and, and to enjoy things. He didn't make us to be, you know... <laughs> boring and, and just lived, you know, terrible lives of uh, asceticism and, and, and self-abuse. He made us to have fun and to live in, in, in his pleasure. There is a pleasure at his, in his presence and a joy at his right hand that condemnation and shame and fear and discouragement and failure and all the things that are pressed upon you in this natural world imposes on you and so you're just stuck and compromised. But if you'll understand that Father has made all of the resources and the authority of he heaven available for you, that yoke will be broken. Because many people live their lives like this. At best, I watch this. It's just like this. There's the high points in God and then there's the low, low points in the realms of participating with the demonic. And so out of that, there's all kinds of doctrines made to try to explain men's experience. And I don't have any problem with the fact that so many people are frustrated trying to explain this experience. I was talking to some ministers one day and just, just talking to them about the scripture and, you know, revealing what God's word says. And they go, and one, one, one preacher goes, come on, man, look around. Can't you see what's going on? Hold up, time out. Yeah, I can. I can see what's going on and I could take your philosophical position. Hallelujah. Listen to me. <laughs> Listen to me, I could take your philosophical position and now I could begin to, from a philosophical point of view, uh, be, to 
create theories of explanation about that. But it's that moment, I depart from the word of God and the truth that sets free. And now I come over into a place of bondage to be able to accommodate your lack of, of, of cooperation with what this abundant life that God has given. With the things that you're stuck in. I want you to understand there is a realm of success. And, and if you'll understand it, let's just talk about it from the Old Testament to start with. I'll lay a foundation. Then let's go over to the New Testament. I want you to succeed. God wants you to succeed. I believe that people's ideas about success are totally backwards. They're, they're, they're really caught up in the pressures that our culture and our society imposes upon us, which is the things that Jesus puts forth foremost saying, don't be interested in it. Or at least he's clearly saying, don't let your cares in any way be compromised by it. King James uses a powerful expression when he says, take no thought for it. He says, because the Lord's saying it's going to keep you from success. He's really what he's saying. It's going to keep you from success. Because if you'll go after all the resources that I made available to you, I'm going to give you this and far, far more. I mean, you know, when the, you know, I love, I love the contrast there with the uh, rich man. Because the rich man, after the Lord Jesus Christ gave him an invitation to come and follow him, but an invitation that demanded him to let go of those things that compromised his heart, to take all of his wealth that had compromised his heart. Because I'm going to tell you right now, if it's not godly gain, if it's not something that God gives to us, and, and I use a phrase I really shouldn't have used, but if it's not something God gives to us, then it's going to cause all kinds of conflict in our life and sorrow is going to cause us to begin to serve mammon. So the Lord's just helping them to set them free. So he doesn't serve mammon. And now he, I'm going to tell you right now, the rich man, I know for a fact, the rich man would have had far more than he had at the moment in time where Jesus told him to give it all to the poor. I know, this is the ways of God. He would have had far more. And, he, and that contrast shows that he would have had far more because the disciples pipe up and they say, hey, we've left everything to follow you. And Jesus says, nobody forsakes everything for my name's sake and for the kingdom except he receives a hundred times more. Imagine a hundred times more. Imagine, he's like talking about what the rich man could have got. If, if the, the young rich man who wanted the kingdom of God, he wanted the kingdom of God, but he didn't want the kingdom of God enough to take what was important to him, what was important to his dad and his grandfather, what was important to the society and the culture around him, what everybody gave him some certain privileges and gave him certain fame and gave him certain, you know, access to other things around them and, and you know, <laughs> respect and all the rest of the stuff. All wrapped up in his finances. Finances and, and material possessions are something that Father delights to give to us. But if he doesn't give it to us and we get it for ourselves and we set our heart upon it, it's going to compromise our success. And I don't really believe that any of God's people are truly going to be successful or classified as successful in the kingdom of God in any respect if somehow... They've gained financial prosperity and material prosperity, but it wasn't in the, in the, on the terms which God demands. So let's look at a couple of verses of Scripture. Let's start in Psalms chapter 1. And I just want you, I want you to know how to be successful. And I want you to know how to be successful the right way. To be successful spiritually first. Say spiritually. spiritually. In every dimension of your spiritual life. The dimension of your whole of your being. Understand, say, say, I want you to understand this. Your body is nothing more than an instrument that your spirit's playing. Can you hear me? Yes. The body is dead without the spirit. Your body is an instrument being played huh, by your spiritual being. Huh? Your expression on your face is a function of your spiritual being. The dis disposition of your heart and of your attitude is an expression of the disposition of your spiritual being. Oh, I mean, Papa's made us. I'm going to tell you right now, he made fish to swim and birds to fly, but he made you and I to praise. Yeah. Hallelujah. You, have you opened up your Bibles to Psalms chapter 1? I figure, I figure everybody in this place, you can quote these things, can't you? Listen, I'm, I want you to understand that I'm going to talk to you about success. I want to talk to you about how God in the Old Testament gave his word, his written word, as a means to mentor those who are in covenant relationship with him. 
You know, I often think about Abraham. What was he doing the first 75 years of his life? I've got some, I, I got, I got some ideas there. I know I'm, gonna, I'm not going to talk about it. I think about Enoch. I, I think about Enoch and, and how he walked with God and how he so pleased God and how it was that he got mentored because he didn't have word then. He had a certain amount of word. He had a certain amount certainly of, of, of an oral tradition because his great, 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 great grandfather, uh, no, great, 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 great grandfather, yeah, was Adam. And so there was a lot of tradition there. But somehow he got captivated by the spirit of the living God. He got captivated by the ways of God. Somehow, think about this. Because I want you to get captivated by God. There's a lot of things buying for your attention. And believe me, I, I, don't, I personally believe from, from my study of the word of God that there wasn't a restraint on iniquity as it is now during uh, Enoch's day. So I believe personally that Enoch lived in a world far more full of unrestrained iniquity and influenced by fallen angels and demon spirits than you and I even have to deal with. And yet, look at the man. Come on. Don't you... Doesn't that sound like success to you? That you could touch that realm of, of understanding? That you could have that kind of knowledge? That somehow you could respond to the voice of God? Maybe you're one... Maybe he was one out of a billion... It's not good statistics, but one out of a billion responded to the voice of God and became captivated with what goes on in the realms of the kingdom of God. And at that moment in time, Father made all of his resources and all of his heavenly glory and power available to that man. And that man was, he didn't see death because he so pleased God. He's reserved as one of the two witnesses to come and prophesy during another time of great iniquity when, when every... Every form of iniquity is released with, well, with absolute certainty. Every form of iniquity is released without restraint during the tribulation. The things that are going to go on there, I mean, my goodness. Uh, you know, to go into the unimaginable events that will take place in the first three and a half years of tribulation, all the, all the fallen angels and all the demon, demonic spirits by the literally by the millions that will be seen by men. And then all of the, the, the things that will take place to ultimately set up uh, the worship of Satan where the Luciferian cult is fully exposed and the Antichrist, or the, the, actually the third, what we would call the third beast, the false prophet, makes an image of the Antichrist, gives it power to speak, Gives it power to live and commands all the world to come and worship in a way that takes Hosea chapter 4, uh, verses 11 through 14, which exposes the iniquity of the worship of the mother of harlots in a way that no other prophet exposed it, but takes it to a whole nother level of just unbridled lust and licentiousness and iniquity. And all of the things that are going on right now is developing the world and the, and the spiritual condition of men to fully embrace that because with every generation, I believe sin has a compound effect. But you and I can grab a hold of God's promise and we can raise up our seed to be mighty in the earth. We can raise up our seed to be those who you know, are filled with the Spirit of the Lord, prophesy, move in the things of signs and wonders and the demonstration of the power of God. It just depends on the things that we, the decisions that we make for ourselves and for our family. Praise God that the children do not have to be punished for the sins of the father. But I'm going to tell you right now, the righteousness of the father and the righteousness of the mother is going to make a big impact on how that child is going to live, on how that child is going to respond to the world that is around them. It's, it, this is true. Go and look in the kings. When you had a wicked mother who was involved somehow in Asherah, Ashtar, or queen of heaven worship, which, you know, Jeremiah addresses so much in the scripture, every one of their, their sons that ruled, ruled wickedly. You show me, I'm going to tell your mothers, you carry a great responsibility of modeling the spiritual environment for your children, of laying hold on the things of God for your children. Fathers, of course, have even a greater responsibility you know, my observation is that in the first stage of life, children usually uh, respond a lot in behavior to their mother and they basically display the behavior of the mother. 
Uh, but there comes a time in the life where that child will begin to display the behavior of the father and that will then be the behavior usually without an, in, without an intervention by the father that they will continue to have for the rest of their lives. And then, of course, you know, I, listen, I'm just, just talking about not walking away with God. I know people now that are preachers who were raised in preachers' homes, but for many years they didn't walk with God because they heard their mom and dad constantly fighting and arguing and fussing. They had the smile and the praise and the hand raising and the singing of the songs in the meeting. And then they got home and it was hell in the house as they lived out their strife and their problems and their issues and all the children could think of is, I got to get out of here. Mom and dad's fighting again. And they didn't even want to get any anywhere near their parents. They went off and then they had an encounter with God many years later and, and ultimately changed your heart and was able to come back and reconcile with their parents. But there's a lot of children that are, in, that are my age and older and, and, well, the whole spectrum. They don't, they don't want to go near their parents. They're just fussing and fighting and arguing the strife and the torment. My goodness, you talk about un, not being successful. You talk about a model of a, a true description of what it means to be a failure. That's it. That's it. They bring forth children into this world and then to totally mess up tweak them, make them dysfunctionally spiritual, spiritually because you simply weren't willing to take hold of the mentorship of God's Word. Okay? And, I'm, and we're just, just going to lay that out there. And we'll lay out the mentorship of God's Word. And then we go and take another step, which most of you can already kind of anticipate in the New Testament, of where Father takes it to a whole other level. And come on, people, it's about time that we quit sitting in a compromised, conflicted position and once again, we can sort that out for you. I can tell you what makes, what conflicts you. I can tell you. I can tell you, but you know what? Many people will not do it. And you know, before I read Psalms chapter 1, let me read an amazing verse of Scripture in Revelation 22. I believe it's verse 14. And um, you can see how well organized my notes are. Okay, so, are you with me? Ha, ha, ha. That's a total joke. Okay. Revelation chapter 22, verse 14. Look at this. I'm, I'm into this one here. Listen to this. I'm into this so, I'm, I'm into this so big, I don't care. What does it cost? What do I got to do? Do I got to get crucified upside down? Let's do it. What do I got to do? Huh? Do I got to go to a nation and, and, be, and be put in prison and beaten every day? Come on, let's do it. What do I got to do? No, all you got to do is take heed unto his word. And come walk in the spirit. Come enjoy a relationship and a fellowship and communion. Sip on the blood all day long. I'm like doing a swan dive into the blood, man. Swimming around, floating on the floaty as it were. I mean, you know, I'm staying in the blood. I'm staying in the covenant of eating. I got manna from heaven every day. That's the true manna. I get to eat every day the word of God, the body of Jesus Christ to exist by him. I get to have this fellowship and this communion that causes me to be able to spiritually see God know God, interact with God in a way that Enoch didn't have availability to. I don't believe he had availability to this. Surely Abraham did it and Moses did it because there was expressions that made us know that they didn't, but yet Abraham so walked with God in, in a consecration to God to throw all of his trust in on God to make his whole life and, and, and his security and his provision about God. The Father makes him the model of the Father of those that we're supposed to follow if we're walking in faith. Come on, man. What a model. Listen, if we'll take heed unto the word of God, we're going to be extremely successful here. And this is an overnight success, as it were. This is faithfulness that develops us to be able to rule and reign with Almighty God for eternity and then to think for a moment that, wait a minute, we're ruling and reigning with Him now. What do we got to do to step into that? What, what kind of fellowship is necessary for us to begin to believe the airship that has been given to us? I'm telling you, the world around us is waiting to see this. Somebody's got to pursue it with desperation to take hold of it. Because I'm telling you, you get really hungry and you're going to get fed these things. We will get fed these things. You get really thirsty and we're going to drink these things. We're going to be given the drink from heaven. It's true because Father's promised it. And that's why he opens up that, that, that contrast over and again, starting in Matthew chapter 6. And he says, no. <laughs> Go after, earnestly desire, pursue, seek the things of the kingdom and God's righteousness. 
This realm of total acceptance with God, the one who's favored by God is the righteous. The one who has fellowship with God is the righteous one. The one that is, the one that is going to be promoted by God and blessed by God is the righteous one. You see it over and again with the kings. The kings that obeyed God and sought him and put him first, they were blessed and everything they did prospered and God's protection was there and God's provision was there and God's fortune and favor and fame was there. Everybody who didn't, they had the opposite. It's the same thing going on with you and me. You might think of yourself as something other than what God describes you to be. But today I want you to stop that and, and let God redefine your life. I'm going to tell you right now, God wants to define you and the dictionary is the Bible. You say it again. God wants to define you and the dictionary is the Bible. Hallelujah. Somebody can tweet that one. No, don't do it. Don't do it. I'm just kidding. God wants to define you. Hallelujah. Come on. We look in the mirror and we define ourselves. God says, quit looking at that thing. Look over here. Look into the mirror of my word. Let me define you. Let me give to you my word. Let me breathe into you my word. Let me speak into you my word. I've created you by my word. You've been born by the seed of my word so that you can live out my life. Let me define you. There's all of these things vying for our favor, our attention, our approval, our belief, our agreement. You're going to have to stop it. You have to understand you're not going to be successful. You're not going to live this life unless you live by the word. You're not going to be an overcomer unless you live by the word. You're not going to have the fortune that God has for you. And listen to this. This is, a, this is like it right here. Blessed, verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments. It's not good enough to know them by hearing. There's a lot of people that know them mentally. It's, it's a, everything is a mental ascent. It's never gone into their heart. It's just something that's within the framework of their thinking. There's never an application. They know so much. You know, I've studied with, with Jewish rabbis, and I've studied with uh, the Haradim, Haradim and, the, and the Orthodox Jews and the Hasidics, and boy, they know the Word, and they know so much about God from an Old Testament perspective, but they do none of it. They can't do it. They have no power to do it. It is, they do good at keeping the holidays. I mean, anybody can go to school for the parties. Are you with me? They do good at going to school for the parties. But every time, all the rest of everything, you know, in, the, in their life, by and large, outside of that, it's just fashioned and formed after the spirits of darkness or conformed to the world. But here's the sad reality. I see the repetition in the church of what I view took place in the lives of Israel over and again. And having seen that so clearly, I'm like, oh God, I don't want that repetition in me. Lord, I want to take heed unto your word. I want to go after you, the examples that you've laid forth and the warnings that you put forth and not follow in the same you know, footsteps of those who were not willing to be doers of your word, who would not allow your word to be mixed with faith. Hebrews chapter 3 and Hebrews chapter 4 is a great warning to all of us and we need to take heed to it. We need to understand our success is based upon taking hold of the Word of God. And there's nothing more important to that success and more of, a, of the actual ultimate fulfillment of that sex, success than verse 14. Blessed are they that do His commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Hallelujah. I don't know what you want. That's what I want. I want to, I want to hear, I want to walk into a place with him and he looks at me because that there's going to be an eye contact one day that each one of us are going to have with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I know that with the deliverer, Christ Jesus. He needs to be our Lord and Savior. I hear a lot of people who so misuse that it's become almost like a profane term. Really. I've heard people use Lord and Savior over and again. He's neither Lord, he's not master, they are not a slave. Are you listening to me? See, you know, when the scripture says they will deny the Lord that bought them, understand this. They, the scripture is actually saying to us, they deny that Christ Jesus purchased us with his own blood and we are his servants and his slaves to do his will. Because that's what it is. We're bought with a price. Glorify God in your body and spirit, which are his. No, you're not. That you're not your own. See, he bought us. He purchased us with his blood. He's, he brought us into his life. And, and then we sit out our lives 
making decisions of whether or not we're going to live our life in Him. He bought us to live our life in Him. And the, the way in which we learn how to perfectly do that is fundamentally the Word of God. But praise God for the Holy Ghost too. Hallelujah. I, 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 I can't hold back and not talk about the Holy Spirit for too long. But at any rate, go back with me to Psalms chapter 1. I'm talking about your success. Do you want to be successful? Listen, I mean, do you, do you want to be successful in, the, in, in, in functioning in the life of the ministry of Jesus Christ? Do you want to be successful in having the flow of divine pleasure? I mean, the rivers of God, the flow of heaven out of your life, where now you quit thinking your thoughts and you get to start thinking his thoughts. You get the mind of Christ and you get the mind of the Spirit and you get to walk around as a sign and a wonder to a, a world around you full of joy, unspeakable. Every attitude that's not his attitude, you're able to take it prisoner inside of a couple of seconds, huh? And kick it out. Amen. Hallelujah. Send it back to hell where it came from. Hallelujah. So you can live out your life in joy, unspeakable, and full of glory, peace that passes understanding. Hallelujah. You know, you watched, last night I watched Jungle Book with uh, a little bit of Jungle Book with uh, Anna. She wanted to watch Jungle Book 1. And so, you know, and uh, Blue is going to bare necessities. And he's talking about the best and the greatest kind of life. And, you know, and I'm saying, hey, look, hold up. The best and the greatest kind of life is when we give ourselves completely over to this liberty in Christ Jesus. And we no longer live in all the concern and the stress and the strife and the worry about all the stuff that we want to have and, and need to get. And all of a sudden, everything that our, our whole desire and our whole pleasure and our whole delight is in knowing him and as a result of that here's what's going to happen you're going to you're going to succeed in an amazing way satan will be able to touch you listen sin is a poison that alters your personality i'm going to say it again sin is a poison that alters your personality it makes you mean sad discouraged unhappy unlovely Huh? He's beautified the meeks, the poison of sin. He'll cause you to be a haughty and arrogant and proud and lose your temper. And it really isn't because of the, the fact that you haven't had a lot of sleep and because it was a stressful situation. No, what's going on is the conflict and the compromise that you've got going on in your life where things that you're allowing that are not right or ha have a bearing upon your spirit that you know nothing about. People say, I'm not stressed when they're grinding their teeth at night. No, you just don't realize that you're not stressed. Go on vacation for a month and then try to, really, go on a vacation, leave your cell phone and computer at home and stay away long enough to forget about work and then come back and you're going to see how, how much stress became normal to you. Huh? And that is a, that is a huge, huge part of people's aggravation and physical problems and issues. But that goes on also just a stress, a, a spiritual stress upon the body. The being, this human being, created the image and likeness of God, was never formed to bear the burden of iniquity. It was never formed or created to any way be in, have imposed upon us the realms of darkness. And I'll tell you, that just messes you up in your attitude and your appearance. Man, I'll tell you right now, we get people beautiful. Just get them full of the Holy Ghost. You know, we just, I've been watching a couple of different things happen. You know, I loved, I loved last Sunday morning when, uh, when uh, they brought Faith in, Dominic, Faith Dominic, they brought her in. She had fallen off of a ladder and her hip was, her, 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 she had, Knocked her hip out of socket, a number of different things, or she's all bruised up and she could barely walk, and they're ushering her in. And then within just about five minutes, she's running around and dancing. I'd love to see the transformation. I, I was with the, I was telling Andy the other day, I said, Well, you know, I, it would have been great for somebody to have captured, because I love capturing these pictures, okay? For someone to have captured the picture of when I was praying for the young man in Africa, forgive me, in India which also a similar thing actually happened here also last Sunday morning with a person who came to visit. And um, the per this person, I laid my hands on them and their, their face was bound, the demon possession and the torment and, the, and, the, and the, the ugliness of iniquity was all over them. And then the power of God came upon them. The Lord knocked them out. They were laying there on the ground. You know, just I love seeing supernatural things because there was bugs. There's so many bugs we were just... But we're by a field and it, agricultural field, and it just 
been a rainy season for a little, about a week or so, and there was bugs everywhere. They were thick, I mean, just thick. And here's this young man laying there. I mean, the, the mat that he was laying on, the tarp that they had down that he was laying on, it was filled with bugs all around him. I didn't see a single bug on him. Just amazing what happens when the Spirit of the Lord, you love the Spirit of the Lord be upon you. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, just watching, I love watching the Holy Ghost come upon people. I love watching like Dominic's faith, Dominic's face go from agony and pain to joy and rejoicing to see that it's almost like a shine. It is a shine. It's a brightness. It's a shine that begins to come upon the face that if we would give ourselves to that realm continually, I believe it would turn into a, actually rays of light. I mean, beams of light. It would just turn into, just, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm a, a believer in the supernatural realm. I believe I'm living in the heavenly place. I believe that God has not limited us to any realms of his divine glory, including translation, you know, uh, transfiguration, and all the rest of the stuff that you read about in the New Testament. You know, but he got up. When this young, boy, young man got up, his face is just beaming with the presence and the glory of God. He, just, he was beautiful. He was, he was, everything that God had created him to, to be was being expressed upon his face. And his theology was better than people who has gone through seminary and spent a lifetime preaching. He got up and he said, I, I was once filled with the devil, now I'm filled with Jesus. You know, the devil, or no, he said, the devil went out of me and Jesus came in. I mean, why goodness gracious, this guy's got, gets up, he's never known the Lord, doesn't like Hinduism, doesn't like Christianity, doesn't like any kind of ism, any religion, and now he's got perfect theology. Praise God. Don't let anybody mess with that. Just keep that, because that's it. That's the basis of it. That's the foundation of it. And if we can begin to believe God's word and we start living according to his word of who he says we are, you're not going to be lusting for the things of this world. You're not going to be so conf conflicted that there is a void and now you've got to go fill it with the pleasures of this life. Come on, people. Let me, just, let me show you here in Psalms chapter 1 because it describes to us in Psalms chapter 1 many of the places where we fail, where we fail, we fail here. And sometimes we're our own counselor, too. We better make sure that we're giving ourselves the counsel of the word. Sometimes people are their own false prophet. They don't need any false prophets in their life. they their own false prophet. They're all scared about going over to that church because they're afraid there might be a false prophet over there. How, how, but you've been doing a good job on your own, declaring to yourself a bunch of things that has nothing to do with what God said or what's in his word. Oh, you can quote scripture, but how you're living it. And what you're saying to yourself and what you're agreeing with is totally false. It's a false thing. It's a demon spirit. Wrong thinking at best. But I'm going to tell you right now, anything that's not the word is, is other than him. And, and it's, it's a demonic realm. And if I could get you to believe that, you could draw a good, clear line of distinction between what, of the things that are going on in your life, and then you can begin to be successful because you start thinking right. And as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. You start thinking right. Start thinking after what God said, and you're going to have miracles right, left, and center. Once that gets established, huh? God's word is going to be tried in you like, like silver is tried in an earthen vessel seven times. God's going to try his word in you. You listen to me. His word... It's like silver tried in vessels of earth seven times. And really, the proverb is talking about our lives. Are we going to agree with God? Are we, going to, are we going to thrust out Ishmael? Are we going to take Isaac? First of all, Becca, are we going to leave the place of, of our security, the land of, of our prosperity and, and all that we know as God called Abraham out of the land of the Chaldeans, out of, her, out of, the, realm of, out of the land of Ur? Are we going to leave everything and follow him and go where it is that only he wants to show us? He said, forsake it all. Why? So that we'd be poor, wretched, naked, miserable, and blind? No. So he can bring us into a blessing that will blow our minds. He said, so that he can bring us in to all the things and all the riches that, he, that he's meant for us to have. We want to hold on to earthly securities. He says, no, you've got to let go of that. If you want to have all the blessings, all the riches, all the favor, all that I have for you, you've got to leave your realm of your own arm of flesh and your own interest and your own security. You've got to come over here and follow me. This is success. Tell me Abraham wasn't successful. Come on. When famine's going on, he's getting rich. Genesis chapter 13, I'm mean, on and on. I can just, we can go through so many examples of Abraham. What an example. I mean, look at somebody who's being successful in every way and follow them. 
imitate them. I'm going to imitate God. There's nobody more successful than God. I'm going to obey what he says in his word, Ephesians chapter 5 and 1, and say as beloved child, I'm a beloved child. First, I got to believe that. As the beloved of the Lord, as those highly prized and favored of God, to know and believe the love that God has for us. God is loved. I mean, there are so many powers of darkness, so many interests of the realm of the satanic that attack that very principle of success. You're not going to be successful unless you're willing to know and believe the love that God has for you. God is love. He that dwells in love dwells in God. How easy is, how easy is it to dwell in God, dwell in love? Here's where all the fullness of God is made revealed, made known. It's unveiled to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge and be filled with all the fullness of God. Think about that. Think about those verses of Scripture when you connect them together of how easy it is to step into all the fullness of God, which has got to be the definition of success. Give me a break. And then it's just simply a choice that we make to obey God's Word and walk in the Spirit. It's just that simple. But it's very complicated and challenging, isn't it? Because you've got all these things pressing against you, banging on the door of your life, demanding attention. Demanding access to your heart and your affections. And I'll tell you right now, you're going to have to shut the door on the devil. Amen. Amen. Keep, the, keep the demons in the, in the, in the night. <laughs> Come on. People, I'm, 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 you know what I'm so interested in? I'm so interested in seeing the gifts of the Spirit flow again in the midst of the church. I'm so interested in seeing tongues and interpretation of tongues happen besides just a few people who know how to lay hold on the anointing. You know, he said, we're not for show and tell. Huh? We're the, the, the leading guide. We're in, in the perfecting in power. You know what I'm saying? Not show and tell. Leading guide, per, per, perfecting in power. Are you listening yes. to me? That's all preachers and ministers are for. Hallelujah. 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 This is good success because you zealous for do you passionate about spiritual things. So I want to just once again, let's just look at the things that conflict us and compromise us. We say in Psalms 1, blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Quit hearing the counsel of the ungodly. About 99.9% .9 of everything you learn in school is the counsel of the ungodly. Huh? It, uh, the discipline of academics is good, but it needs to be flow right over in to the realms of the kingdom of God so he can sort you out. And all you're going to be doing is taking a hold of the things that you've learned in school to apply them in the kingdom of God. That's it. <laughs> I sat in Kashmir the other day with the, the, the professor and leader of plant tissue culture science in the nation of Kashmir. And you know... <laughs> If, if Cade was here, he would tell you what the guy was doing. He was sitting there with his mouth hanging out as I'm describing to him, you know, plant tissue culture techniques that they would like to have. I'm baiting him for the kingdom of God. Come, little fishy, fishy. Come here, take the bait. Take the bait. It's good. Come, come here, little fishy. Because I'm, and I got him too. He's a hook, line, and sinker, man. He's like, our doors of our lab and our department are open to you. Whatever, pro and was there, whatever projects we can do. Well, I'm taking everything I've ever learned. I'm going to funnel it into the kingdom of God to reach souls. People, that's what it's all about. Otherwise, it just turns you over into pride and arrogance and deceit and compromise you and conflicts you and puts you down an avenue of mammon. And there's no success there. Just, it's just despair and defeat and discouragement on every level. Blessed are those who do not walk in the counsel of ungodly. Blessed are those who do not stand in the way of sinners. Listen, what does it mean to stand in the way of sinners? It's, it's to go and stand over with all this, those who are of this world, the lust, lust, lust of the eye and pride of life, and look at what they're looking and laugh at what they're laughing and enjoy what they're enjoying and get excited about what they're excited about. I'm going to tell you right now, you're not going to be successful. Father brings it down in the most simplest terms for us. You're not going to be successful. I'm going to give you the, you know, because Psalms, look, forgive me, Joshua chapter 1, verses 7 and 8 are the antidote for these things. It's the antidote for these things. Because if you don't have Joshua 7, or Joshua 1, 7, 8 in you, where you're meditating upon his word day and night, you're going to, you're going to be, there's going to be a void. You, your heart's going to be turned away because there's the, the prince of the power of the air and the, and the press that the satanic realm 
has launched against our soul. It's fleshly lust that war against the soul. A fleshly realm. It's literally a synonym for a demonic realm that's, that is at war against our soul, our whole spiritual lives, our whole being. Because where your spirit goes, so does your body. Huh, are you listening to me? It's true. Somebody said, I just got a hand out of control. Well, you know what? You need to get that fixed. The reality of it is your hand ain't out of control. It's your spirit because your hand can't move without your spirit. Let's pull your spirit out of you and watch what your hand does. It's going to lay there lifeless. <laughs> you know what I'm saying to you? Come on, give me a break, people. Come on, Satanamaya. The Holy Ghost has joined us unto his spirit. But the only way we're going to understand of walking that oneness is that we realize that the spirit of truth is only speaking the word of truth. And it's the word of truth that we're going to have to give attendance to. It's what's going to impact our understanding, our thinking, our decision making, the universe that we're creating. I am creating a universe right now for my Naomi to live in. And she watches everything I do. Huh? And I'm showing her how to go after the Holy Ghost. Anna, on the way here this morning, you know, we were working with her, writing her name before we left. And on the way here this morning, she was writing a Holy Ghost song. And she says, uh, Papa, you know what I'm going to do when I get bigger? She says, I'm going to preach just like Mama. And so as soon as she said that, I began to pray, Oh, Father, under my breath, Father, I ask you right now in Jesus' name, keep that, oh God, keep that, protect it. Let all heaven come. Oh, Father, let us have wisdom and insight on how to model that, how to mentor that. Because I'm not interested in anything but her spiritual success. I'm not interested in her playing, you know, in the stadiums of the Olympeds. Huh? Are you with me? Yeah. Which are just literally were set up as centers of demonic worship for devils. It was true. When Antiochus IV Epiphanes, who called himself the manifestation of God, tried to Hellenize uh, Israel and the Jewish people, he brought in the stadiums. He erected the stadiums. And at the center of the stadiums were God and demanded them all to participate with the sports events. That's how he Hellenized them. H-E-L-L. Anized them. Sure. I give you lots of sources on that. It's not my idea. My, you know, one of the things with my book that Charisma, I got a really great editor. They threw my book back at me and wanted more sources. And I'm sitting there going, my goodness, this is amazing. How credible of a company, a book publishing company, who wants to demand of me to prove by sources all my statements, both scriptural and also theologically, academically. Because you know what? Anybody who thinks that they got an original idea has got some serious pride issues. You know, if somebody else hasn't thought it through, give me a break. What are you, the genius of the world? I mean, what arrogance. Oh, you got a revelation that nobody else had? You know, keep that to yourself, please. You know what I'm saying? Let's watch you and see what happens to you. All right? No, I'm not listening. Come on, people. We got sources for these things. And we're caught away with, we're caught, caught away with a Greco-Roman society that was set up in, and defined by the worship of demon spirits. Absolute. It's not in any, it's not even in the arena of question, both biblically and secularly. Hello. God's calling us to come be taught in the realms of heaven. He's saying, guys, come on over. Come on over. Papa's saying, is anybody going to come over here with us? Is anybody going to stand with us? Can you hear Joshua? Joshua's going, is there anybody that's going to stand with us? He's looking at the landscape of what's going already on in Israel. And he's saying, as for me and my house, listen to the man of God. Listen to somebody that knows how to take a hold of his house. As for me and my house. I mean, that's, I'm going to tell you right now, Father's going to honor that. And it's not by the arm of flesh, huh? It's servitude leadership that people are going to follow you because they respect you and honor you and they've watched the character and actions of your life and there's trust there, huh? Hallelujah. Come on, people. I'm talking about success. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. 
We're not going to walk in the counsel of the ungodly. We're not going to stand in the way of sinners. And we're not going to sit in the seat of the scornful. You better get yourself some duct tape from Home Depot if you can't get it done any other way. I'm going to tell you right now, go join the Roman Catholic Church and take a vow of silence. And sit in a year for a year in a cell. Don't say nothing. And I guarantee you something will begin to happen in your spirit about the way you spend your opinion. And you will baby better for it. Hallelujah. It's true. If you can't learn it by the discipline of the word, and that's where it should be, and reality of it is, that's where the, it's only really going to be from the heart, and that's where Papa wants it. He wants it in the heart, in truth. He don't want you to just because you got duct tape from Home Depot, Gorilla Tape too, and you've wrapped it around your head, and you got your mouth locked down, huh? Some people need to go ahead and add to that because I think that they've got such a force of... of, of, of of impact upon their life, they need to go ahead and get somebody to, you know, get themselves a surgeon, go ahead and suture the thing up, okay? You know, go ahead and cut a little bit off the top lip, cut a little bit off the bottom lip, suture it up, and then take the suitors out, and I'm going to tell you right now, it's stuck together. <laughs> but, you know, that's not what Papa's looking for. He's looking for a circumcision of the heart yeah. that creates a circumcision of the lips. Mm, 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 mm. The word of faith that's in my heart and in my mouth. God says in the Old Testament, these things aren't out of reach for you. I'm not asking you to do something that goes beyond your ability because I gave you the word. It is there in your heart and in your mouth. And then, you know, Paul picks it up and says, wait a minute, now let me set this thing right down in the midst of the new creation that has now joined, whose spirit is joined under the Lord where you've been filled up with all the power and the unlimited glory of heaven so that the covenant could be fulfilled where God would make us to walk in his statutes, huh, in his judgments, <laughs> hallelujah. The new heart is a, is a crying out, spirit of the Son saying, Obey God! All day long inside of us. You know, you've got to fight to, 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 to shut down that voice. You've got to harden your heart to shut down that voice. Oh, but ah, Ristapaya, what happens when you begin to live every day by the manna, the bread of life, the bread of heaven? What happens when you live all day sipping on the cup, hallelujah, of salvation, the cup of communion, the precious blood of Jesus Christ, thinking all day long about the blood that washed you and cleansed you, though your sins was like the double dye stain of red murderous crimson. He's made you white like wool. Come on, just clean. Though your life was polluted like like downtown LA. He's made a clean atmosphere <laughs> of your life. Robo polluted like a reservoir in China. Now it's crystal clear water. Hallelujah. And worse than that, polluted like a septic system. And now he's made it. Oh, one of the things I love about purity, one of the things that I love about holiness and righteousness is it allows me to clearly see sin dulls the senses. It dulls the senses. Purity and holiness allows me to under, not to be deceived, to see things as they really are, to hear, to be sensitive to Him, to hear, to respond, to have, as it were, like a force field around me where Satan's fiery darts can't get at me. So I'm not having to deal with all this perplexity of doubts and questions and unbelief and concern bogged down with all of these threats. I'm just living over here in freedom land, the glorious liberty of the sons of God. Hallelujah. And everything I touch is blessed. And everywhere the soles of my feet go, it becomes my possession. I got a ministry of Jesus Christ to where I've got the uttermost parts of the earth for my possession and the loss for my inheritance. Come on, man. What a realm to live in. This is a realm that you and I get to fully embrace because we embrace purity. We love purity. We're called to glory and purity. He's given us everything we need to walk in glory and purity. And he says, this is what you need to focus on. You need to be all very, very diligent about this. In fact, you need to give all diligence. Make this the high mark, high watermark of the disciplines of your life. This is what Paul, Peter is saying, forgive me, in, in 2 Peter chapter 1. He says, as long as I'm in the ta this tabernacle, I'm going to do my best by stirring you up, keeping you in remembrance of these things. It's the power of the word that is going to produce this. Understand, those three things right there, walking in the counsel of the ungodly, standing in the way of sinners, and and sit in the seat of the scornful, speaking bad about anyone or anything. Come on, people. Quit being so insecure, threatened, discouraged, overrun, because it's the insecurity. It's the sense of being threatened. 
the sense of being rejected or hurt or having offense that causes us to speak evil. Yeah. Come on, people. God wants to clean you, cleanse you, build you up, strengthen you, give you boldness, faith, authority to speak things into existence. Wow! To rule and reign with him, to judge angels. Oh, Prabasitia, to Boramandi Kiesta, to do great signs and wonders that went beyond what Jesus did. These works and greater works. It's true. It's true. Giving ourselves to this realm of love, of laying down our life for the for the brethren. Oh my. Somebody said, Well, is there any reason, justifiable reason for me to leave the meeting and leave the church? No. No, it's a justifiable reason for you to stay as soon as you're offended and as soon as you hurt. It's just really just all of a sudden it became the test. Are you willing to lay down your life for the body of Christ, for the saints, for the church, for the brethren, even as Jesus showed us how? This is the test. This is the word tried seven times in earthen vessels. It's going to be tried so that it is found to be that which rules and dominates. I'm living pure word over here. Somebody said, oh, he preaches the pure word of God. Yeah, but by the time you hear it, it's contaminated. It's true, because we hear based upon our experience, huh? We hear based upon, we judge based upon our experience. We speak and understand the situation based upon our experience. I had a great one the other night. I was standing in line to get on an airplane, and the guy standing in front of me going, I can't find my wife. I said, well, you better find her. You can't be without her. The guy behind me says, maybe he doesn't want to find her. My experience is you don't want to lose her. His experience is she might need to go. Everything that you see, everything that you encounter, everything you hear, is all filtered through the judgment and perception of your own experience. Papa's to find a new experience for you and me that to cast down and throw down all the other stuff that's been in our way. I don't want to, I don't want to live out my life based upon my own perception of things. My own discernment, my own, my own wisdom, my own understanding. Even things I thought that I heard from God got corrected by His Word. Praise God. Are you listening to me? Come on. I'm just so God, I'm so blessed for the word of God. I would have thought that I thought that was from God. I was believing. I heard from God the word. I turned to the word of the Lord. The word of God instructed me in the ways of life, so I could say, "Praise God for the liberty, the glorious liberty, of the sons of God." He tells us, "But you delight in the word of the Lord. You delight in His word, in His way, in His law. The spiritual laws of life are laid down for us in His word." And then we're not just talking, we're not talking about a law. We're not talking about a law, a mosaic law. We're talking about the laws of God, his word, his ways, his statutes, his judgments, his precepts, his insights, his discernment, what he knows about life, how he's the one who authored it. He knows how, he's, he knows how to be successful with it. You delight in the word of the Lord and in his word you meditate day and night. This is going to be emphasized again. And I mean, I've got so many verses of Scripture here, I'm not going to get through to, to them. I'm just going to hopefully seed you today to go and search them out. Praise God for search engines. You know why computers were invented? So we could study the Word better. Amen. That's why they were invented. They were invented so we could have huge libraries. i got a library on my computer. It would, if you put books in here, it would fill all of the walls in this place and stacks in the middle. Right there at my fingertips, I do a search engine. I got it all. It takes you all day to get through one word. You take longer than one, one, all day to get through one word. That's why God created computers. He allowed computers to be created so we could study His word more effectively. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm seeding you to study His word more effectively. Come on, man. Oh, you'll, you'll rise up from there and you'll be smarter and wiser than all of your teachers because your meditations are upon his word. You'll have wisdom and discernment and insight and knowledge. You'll have the kind of, of the word of knowledge that you really want. It's not some kind of flaky, you know, uh, Christian reading. It is the power of God that changes hearts, that divides soul from spirit and, 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 and joint tomorrow, hallelujah, and discerns the thought and intent of the heart. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Here's how successful you'll be. You'll be like a tree planted by the water, bringing forth fruit in the season. Your leaf will not wither, and whatever you do will prosper. You want success? Here's success. Every sin you put your hand to, it's a poison. It alters your personality. It defeats your life. Hmm? It damages you. It ruins you. Ruins you. 
Oh, thank you, Father, for a cleansing. There is a cleansing <laughs> from Calvary's flow. Praise God. I'm washed in the blood of Jesus. Thank, we just thank Father so much that it, where there is a failure, where there is a stumbling, where there is a sin, where there is something that goes on in our life that doesn't please Him, the blood of Jesus Christ is there. And the Spirit of the Son immediately repents. Huh? The Spirit that cries, Abba, Father, is immediately going, Oh, God, forgive me. How did I do it? Wash me in your blood. Oh, God, I consecrate myself to live for you all the days of my life. I want to walk for you, with you, and be perfect. Some people are threatened by that. I'm empowered by it. I don't want before you and be pure. Some people are threatened by be pure even as you pure. I'm not threatened. I'm empowered. I'm going, that's what I want, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That, that's the right heart. That's the right response. Anything else, is, as far as I'm concerned, is the definition of religion. Hmm? It's true. Carl Papa's called us into a wonderful realm. Pava mosikisti pretia frana. Hallelujah. Just go look at with me here and. This keys, you want to be successful? Hallelujah. 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 Parable Shifrata. At every phase in your life, at every juncture in your life, every dimension of your life, oh, come on, people. Let's understand what it means to have success. Let's define success properly. God wants to bless you. I, I, you know, I, I know that... Even in my own life, I can, I know, I, I, everybody I see, everybody I know. God is calling them to a greater success. Some people are satisfied with their success that they've had, and they stop along the way, and they don't keep the press on. Somehow they quit hungering, somehow they quit thirsting, and they quit growing, and they quit maturing in the way that God wanted them to grow, and the way that God wanted them to mature, in their ministry, in, in, in their health. Somebody says it's divine health. It, truly scriptural. It's like, are you kidding me, man? I mean, it's just so locked in together with redemption. By his stripes, we were healed. I mean, he bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sin might be, you know, might live unto God. Being dead to sin, being made the righteousness of God, cut off from sin, now righteous in him, and by his wound is harobokitaya. We were healed. You talk about divine health. I mean, to every day walk in physical strength and physical health to command your body, know that you're in charge. <laughs> it's tough commanding somebody that ain't going to listen to you. It's wonderful when you can command somebody and they listen to you and you start commanding yourself. Come on, people. Sit a ruin you and make a devil out of you. It'll make you ugly. U-G-L-Y with capital letters and several exclamation marks underlined and highlighted in, in purple, brown, shoe, ugly. Sin make you ugly, torment you, vex you, poison you, alter you, mess you up, make you twisted, dysfunctional, unhappy, tormented. God made us to live in joy and thanksgiving. He made fish to swim, birds to fly, and men to praise. Hallelujah. You can't do any praising without joy and spiritual. At one time, A.A. Allen was asked, he said, what do you see as the highlight and hallmark of revival? He said, joy unspeakable and full of glory. And that's been said and witnessed over and again. I mean, to step into the joy and to step into the delight and to step into the rejoicing. Oh, parasia. I get a smile and I can't get it off. Hallelujah. I can't shut it down. I got a happy, I got a song. Praise God. Come on. Sin pollutes that. Sin pollutes that. Poisons you. And alters your personality. Makes a frowner out of you. Makes a complainer out of you. Makes an unhappy soul, a tormented soul, a vexed soul, a condemned soul. Frustrated soul, a sorrowful soul, depressed soul. Take hold of the word of God. Here we go. This is for them. They're walking into the miracle of their inheritance, which speaks to us today. Here in Joshua chapter 1. And we need to understand that there's spiritual implication. We call it the law of double references. God talking to them and is also talking to us. 
God speaking of things that happen in the past, that have happened in the future, that have happened at one time as a prophet is speaking, but it's going to be repeated again in the future at another time. Huh? Hurrah, Buster. We've got a birthright. How desperate are you? Huh? Come on. How desperate are you for the inheritance? Come on. We got a birthright. How desperate are you for the... Look at the struggle in the Bible over the birthright and over the inheritance. Come on. Come on. Look who stepped into the inheritance. Come on, look at that obedience in Joseph. Come on, look at that obedience in Joseph. Huh? He can have a happy time in the pit. He can have a happy time in the prison. Come on, look at him. I know God. There's nothing going to condemn him. You throw him in a prison, make it look like he's been shut out from God. And he says, I know God. You tell me a dream and I'll give you the interpretation. Listen to the faith, the boldness. Hallelujah. The total detachment from circumstance, people, is something God wants to teach us. Where it's human empathy and human sympathy and all of our own concerns no longer impose upon our lives its dictates. Where you can grab somebody that's hurting and you can't even, you don't even know anything about their pain because all you can see is their healing and say, put your weight on that foot that's torn up and now run, in Jesus' name. I believe it's why Wigglesworth would take people and like that man whose stomach was full of cancer and being attended by a physician and he was on a point of death and oh, Wigglesworth, he hit him in the stomach and the people that witnessed it said he gave him a serious punch and the doctor screaming you killed him you killed him and and Wigglesworth is so detached he's already on his way praying for the next person <laughs> while the preacher while the preacher while the and they are preachers but while the doctor screaming you killed him huh meanwhile the guy's getting up off the cock completely healed he's totally detached from human sympathy human concern the human realm those things which conflict us Oh, look, come on, the Word of God wants to mentor us. The Spirit of the Lord wants to show us how. Hallelujah. He, the Holy Ghost wants, who the Holy Ghost wants to show us how to be living Word. Hallelujah. Ha, 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 ha. He does. He does. It's the Holy Ghost that makes the Word manifest. It was the Holy Ghost that came upon Mary. And that holy thing that was conceived on her, in her, is the Word of God incarnate. It's the Holy Ghost that always brings to pass the Word. He makes manifest the Word. He made manifest the Word in Genesis 1. And He made manifest the Word in Matthew 1. It's the Holy Ghost that makes manifest the Word in you and I, who brings it into a living reality and expression with shinu and with bone and shinu and skin and life. Hallelujah. Men are willing to walk with God. He, he mobilizes all the resources of heaven and of His power and His divine glory to come to our aid and stand alongside of us. Anna was preaching to me last night. She didn't know she was preaching to me because I was talking about her sleeping in her own bed and not in my room. She said, well, if something try to get me, Christ Jesus is right here by my side. I said, that's correct. And he ain't going to just stand there and look on. He ain't just going to stand there and look on. He's going to fight the fight. He's going to do the work. She still ended up in sleeping, like most Christians, she still ended up sleeping in my room after the sermon was preached. Huh? In fact, it was actually in, it was in context of Shere Khan's coming. It's just, you can take even Jungle Book and preach a sermon with it. Shikhan's coming and wants to destroy you. He's the devil manifest. Stinking leopard kind of thing, you know. Tiger, all the same. Same family. Same species, actually. We don't want to get into that. Joshua 1, verse, let's start at verse 6. Can I, I'm talking to you today. Don't give me a great sermon and insight, divine wisdom and insight that five-year-old gave me. You mean Christ Jesus right here? Christ Jesus right here. She wasn't saying you mean. She just told me. Christ Jesus right here by my side. And if anything comes out against me, he's going to protect me. Yes. But she didn't do it. She didn't apply it. <laughs> Praise God for the insight to know it. But the application, when those lights went off and she's in that room by herself and it's way down on the other side of the house, Wow! And told me that I needed to discipline her and put her in her bedroom. I said, You discipline her. 
I have no discipline in me. I'm run completely out. I'm completely out. I used all mine up on four kids. Mine's out. I made a bed for her at the foot of my bed. She slept good. Come on, people. I'll just move on in and move on into the Father's room. Huh. Move on into the Father's house. Who shapaha. Move on into the holies of holies. I can feel I, I can feel her, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to be outside of Father's room. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm, Mom and Dad are in Australia. And we're sitting over here on the other side of the house, away from Mimi and Papa. This ain't right. I need some comfort. Amen. Move on into the holies of holies. Praise God. Hallelujah. Shika tarama shipaha. Hallelujah. My Papa does a lot with our faith. We're getting ready to go minister in four different places in Iowa this week. And their faith is supercharged. I mean, they believe revival's coming to Iowa. I'm like, okay, let's do this thing. I'm not under pressure at all because I'm completely detached. I'm living in the God thing. Huh? It's all about God. I'm having a good time, man. I don't feel any pressure. I didn't lose, I'm not losing any sleep. I'm not trying to think of what we're going to preach about. Uh, I'm not asking God for some, begging Him for some special signs and, and wonders. I am the carrier of the glory. I am the ambassador of Christ, the anointed of the Lord. Hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, and He's going to do the work. Wow. And, and Papa's going to respond to people's faith. To my faith, your faith, their faith. Come on. Let's let the word of God begin to work in us and be mixed with faith. The action, the doing, the stepping out, the proclaiming, the reaching out, saying, look, I'm on tear right now. I'm laying aside all that other stuff that I've been taught through the world and by the things and examples that are in the world. I'm going to come over here and be taught of God. Hallelujah. I'm taught of God. I don't need anybody to teach me. God's taught me, and I'm supposed to live my whole life in Him. Hallelujah. I'm supposed to exist in Him. Looky over here. He isn't threatened one bit. Hallelujah. He's not concerned about any finances. Hallelujah. Sickness, disease, sin, iniquity, catastrophe, you know, nuclear explosions, tsunamis, not concerned. Hallelujah. Whew. Hallelujah. Come on, man. I'm in him and he's in me. I'm in him and he's commanded me to be. What a commandment. I mean, he's laid these heavy commandments on us. They have everything that he has. It's all ours. Enjoy. Be joyful. I empower you to be happy and prosperous. But there's laws. Be strong and of great confidence. Cast not away your confidence, for it has a great payday, great recompense of reward. Don't let somebody say it's over for you. You tell them, I'm just getting warmed up. I ain't even started pitching yet. I'm just in the bullpen and John, it ain't over. It ain't even close to being over, man. <laughs> Hallelujah. Halle I mean, come on. Moses didn't even start his ministry till he was 80. Mo Abraham didn't even step into walking with God, as it were, till he was 75. I mean, come on. God's got a long life, and he's got great... I mean, don't act like you blew it and it's all done. My goodness, learn from your stupidity and let God make you smart. Hallelujah. So you don't act like that anymore. Come on, you got a whole life in front of you. Give me a break. You got a whole my, my eternity. In Jesus' name. Things that God can set up will happen in a day. In a day. In a day. In a moment. He sets, he sees you set your heart on something. You need to get up every day and start talking to the Father about those things that you're passionate about having that He's commanded you to have. I said, you need to get up every day and tell, talk to the Father about those things that you're passionate about having which He's commanded you to have. 
Father, I thank you for the word of knowledge. I thank you for the discerning of spirit. I thank you for the word of wisdom. I thank you for the working of miracles. I thank you for the gifts of healing. I thank you for the gift of faith. I thank you for prophecy and tongues, interpretation and tongues. I thank you for signs and wonders and demonstrations of the Holy Ghost and power. I thank you for these works and great works. I thank you that these signs follow me because I'm one of yours that believe. I mean, just go after it. Come on, what is that you want? What does he want? I want the glory of Jesus manifested through my life. Father's commanded it. Sure, there's a lot of stuff buying for your affections, your attitudes, your attention. But you'd be confident. Courageous. Courage is something that says, I'm going to cast down the fear. There is a realm where people can actually commit themselves to the battlefield. You just go, okay, I'm not getting up. I'm over my fear. I'm over hiding. Look, I'm in this thing. I'm committed. I'm committed to the battlefield. Where the liver I die, I'm committed to the battlefield. There's, a, there's something in us that can do that. With bombs going off everywhere, with people dying everywhere, just total com commitment. It produces a courage because it now allows you to deal with the fear. God's given us something even more powerful to deal with fear. Love. Boy, love come at you right, left, and center with all kinds of blessings from heaven. Come on. Whew. Perfect love cast out all fear. Whew. And boy, ah, ah, the boat of deep, the faith that works by love. We'll just keep on going. Come on. And it impacts you. Your love for Father and Father's love being able to flow through you impacts you in the way that you love your wife, you love your husband, you love your children, you love and lay down your life for the people that are around you. I'm going to tell you right now, it's more than a domino effect. A domino effect has one, a, a one flow of reaction. I'm telling you right now, this thing is so convoluted, it goes here, this way, that way, and every way. Yeah. Right? It affects every part of it, every dimension of your life. If it's in your life one way, it's in your life every way. Come on, Papa wants to come and be the ruler. He wants to come. Let his word rule over you. Let his Holy Ghost rule. Christ Jesus wants to come. The living word rule over us, in us. Amen. I said rule over us, in us. Yes. Not just alongside of me, inside me. Say not alongside me, not just alongside me. Alongside. Inside me. That's close to Papua New Guinea and pigeon. Not just alongside me. Inside me. If you ever go there, they'll get that. Thank you, Jesus. For unto the people, for unto the people shall you divide for an inheritance the land which I swore unto you fathers to give them. He says this. This is the man of God. Talking to the man of God. Only be strong. And very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Turn not from the right hand. And I'm going to say this. To do all of my words which my servant, Christ Jesus, has commanded you. Huh? To do all the commands, all that was spoken by my servant, Christ Jesus. Come on now. Don't turn to the right. Don't turn to the left. People, this is stuff. This is this is tough stuff. This is difficult. These are difficult situations. This is looking across the Jordan and seeing people saying, "You come over here, and we're going to kill you, and we're killing your kids to start with, and we're going to slaughter them before your eyes, and we're going to rip your children out of the out of your stomach, and we're going to smash them up against the tree, and just all kinds of threats." Every one of us have challenges and circumstances that we're facing that are opposing our obedience to God. And we're just going to have to get committed and say, okay, I'm not turning the right to the left. I'm consecrated. I'm committed. This is what God's told me to do. This is how I'm going to do it. Hallelujah. I'm going to live this way. I'm going to let the word of God rule over me. I'm going to, and you're going to have to give yourself to the word of God because it's spirit and life. You give yourself to the word of God as it's spirit and life instead of rules and regulation. I'm going to tell you step into relationship instead of religion. I said if you give to your, with yourself to the word of God as spirit and life instead of rules and regulations, you'll move out of religion and live and occupy yourself in the realms of relationship. It's spirit and life. It's living. It's, it's who. <laughs> you get strong from it. <laughs> it's like milk and honey. Woohoo. Let me see if I can finish this quickly. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to everything that Moses command, the law which Moses, my servant, commands you. Turn not to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. 
Mm -mm -mm. And I hear, I hear this, that I may be able to respond to you and answer you with whatever you ask me to do. Whatever you ask me, I'll do it so that my blessing and my protection and my provision and my perfection and my power and my glory and all the resources of heaven will always be right there with you because you're willing to walk with me. Because that's what his word is all about. His word is all about an instruction to you and I about how to walk with him, to walk in his footsteps, to do the things that are bring us into a place of an agreement with him. Verse 8. This book of the law, this word of life, should not depart out of my mouth, but I will meditate in it day and night. Whew. Oh, hallelujah. 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 He's put his word in my mouth. Whew. That I may meditate in it day and night. The powerful word that created the heavens and the earth. The powerful word that sets the captives free. The powerful word that he sends forth and heals them. This word that goes forth out of my mouth, saith the Lord, shall not return unto me void, but shall accomplish those things which I have purposed. And oh, that his word is there in our mouth, so that we may then say, O oh God, your word which goes out of my mouth shall not return unto you void, but shall accomplish those things which you have purposed. That when I speak to a person, that life is set free. That when I speak to a nation, that nation set free. Whatever the situation may be, that I find myself not somehow in prison by what I see around me, but recognizing that what I've asked Father, He shall surely do. That no matter what the circumstances try to tell me is going on, I know Father is arranging in heaven for San Diego over three million people to be shaken by the power of God. I've seen over and again in my life the glory of God, the fire of His presence come upon every dwelling place in this city and in this region. And all these things go on that make it seem like that it's not going to happen. And all, all those are is false prophets and false testimonies and false witnesses and lies of the powers of darkness trying to stop that which God has ordained, trying to kill the anointing and trying to kill that move of God before it comes. People, it's got, you're going to have to understand it's time that you and I begin to, to live by what God has said, recognizing that He is faithful concerning His promises and that there's no prayer that you have prayed that has not been heard in the halls of heaven, that has not been come up unto the very ears of Almighty God. Not a prayer! Not a prayer, not a prayer that you prayed, but His word should be tried in you seven times as though it were tried, silver tried seven times in a vessel of earth. Yeah, Papa's going to make sure that everything is arranged properly in our life. He's going to work and mobilize all heaven to bring to pass those things that He's ordained us to do and to be. Hallelujah. Get your delight in the Lord. Talking to you about success. Meditate on what he says day and night. Don't let it escape you. <laughs> I'm talking about success. He tells you, for then shall you make your way prosperous. And then shall you have good success. <laughs> the word of God was there to mentor them in the ways of God. And his word is powerful and it's living. I took them through the wilderness so that I might teach them that man does not live by bread alone. I took them through the place of opposition and threat to their life and existence. I took them through a place of hard tryings and testings. They were in heaviness through many fold temptation that the trying of their faith might be found unto praise and honor and glory. I took them through the wilderness. I led them by a way that they did not know, a hard way that I might show them man does not live by bread alone, but by every word which proceeds out of the mouth of God. I want to show them how to be successful. And then Father takes that mentorship of the word and he brings it into a realm where you and I now are born of the word, where the word is written upon the tables of the heart and our minds so that we keep them and so that we would do them and gives to us the spirit of truth, the Holy Ghost, the only one who can in 
interpret the Word, the only one who can reveal the Word, the only one who can manifest the Word through our lives. And then not only did He put Him inside of us, but He's come to teach us and lead us and guide us and mentor us and show us on a daily basis uh, basis in our passions and our emotions and our attitudes and our appetite and our choices and our decisions always there showing us the love of the Father revealing the love of Jesus what I mean come on come on come on come on in quit delaying you've got all heaven mobilized for you come on people Come on, stand with me. Jesus is calling. And he's never going to stop calling. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Today, let everything about your life be conformed to the Word. Today, let everything about your life be conformed to the image of the Son. Listen to me. Jesus is calling. He's tenderly calling. He's calling for each one of us to come and allow Him to live, be revealed in our lives. Hallelujah. Whew. Because we voluntarily submit ourselves to what He said. I don't care if it's hard, if it's easy, it doesn't matter. I tell you right now, it's going to get easier all the time. It's going to get better and better, I promise you. You're going to go, what? What's going to happen is you find yourself completely consecrated to living by the Word of God. You're going to go, what on earth have I been? Whoa. Pastor's been trying to tell me I'm stupid for a long time. What on earth have I been doing with my life? What have I, why have I lingered? Why have I waited? Why have I made other passions, other interests bigger than God's passions and His interests? Why have I been willing to be deceived to believe that somehow Satan had something more fun, more wonderful, more enjoyable, more delightful than what God has? Why is it that I made him so distant, so far away when he's a very present God? Come on! Papa, change your life to start living by the Word. He'll fill you with insight and revelation and the knowledge of the Lord, but your eyes will be open. You'll be able to see. You'll be able to understand. You'll be able to know these things. Hallelujah. You just talk to him about it. You say, Papa, I'm hungry for this. Pastor, you're talking about these things today. I want it. I got to have it. I just can't live without it. I'm done. I'm done with my own stuff. I'm done with my own problems. I'm done with my own issues. I'm done thinking my own thoughts. I'm done believing my own word. I'm done interpreting my life based upon the tea leaves of circumstances. I'm done going to a tree to tell me the future. It's true. That's what Israel did. Jesus. Watch out, we do the same thing. Satan comes to lay claims upon the life of God's people. He goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Flesh and lust war against the soul. He uses doubt, discouragement, circumstances. He compromises us through the cares of this life, deceitfulness of riches and the pleasures of this world. And I tell you, I render his demonic stronghold powerless. I break the power of it. And I don't care what you got to do. Some people, you got to understand. I watch, I look at people, I can see places at times. I'm not necessarily talking about here, but there is some of that here right now. I'm going to tell you, just in all honesty. But I see people marked with the world. They hang on to things of the world. I read the Bible and I say, is there anything in the Bible that, is there anything in my life that's not in the Word of God? I don't want it. Somebody say, well, how much can you get away with? I'm not interested. I'm interested in all of heaven that I can have. I'm not interested in what I can get away with. I'm interested in all heaven I can have. 
I want to be conformed to the Word, conformed to the Son, conformed to Christ Jesus, conformed to the image in every way. I want to do those things which Father has privileged me with an opportunity to do. It's not some kind of frustrating command, an obligation. Give me a break. It's a privilege and an opportunity to step into the glory of heaven. It's about time somebody believes. It's about time time somebody so believes they lay hold on this that it does not matter what happens it does not matter what happens to them it does not change anything about what God said if you'll begin to get yourself some faith commitments in your life some praise commitments in your life you know we had and I we're constantly good dealing with situation we had a situation come up the other day I said let's just watch what God will do that's how I completely I detach because it came to vie for my concern. It came to vie for my affection. It came to vie for my, it, and try to impose even fear on me. I, I disconnect, I detach and go, let's just watch what God will do. Hallelujah. I just thrust my life into, the, just thrust, find a way to thrust your life into his care and do his hand. So I, I, Bob was in charge, amen. amen. I know what he's committed. He's committed to prosper me, make me successful. He's committed and boy, could I give you so many verses of scripture where Father says, you just obey my walk, word. You walk in my ways. And I promise you, I will bless you. I will secure a blessing for you and prosperity to you. And then also then gives to everybody a warning of just the opposite. But he says, listen, I want you to obey me because I want to make you wealthy. I want to prosper you and make you wealthy so that I may establish my covenant. Come on. And there is a spiritual riches that so, is so elevated far beyond material wealth and riches that they're not even right to be contrasted and compared. But he's going, he wants it all for us. Give me a sad man and I'll show you the poorest person on the planet. Give me someone happy, I'll show you the richest person on the planet. It's nothing to do with our finances. It has to do with the disposition of life. Ha, bo And Papa says, I want you to have joy unspeakable and full of glory. I want you to rejoice forevermore. Somebody said, what a command. It's an empowerment, people. It's his word empowering you. All you gotta do is say, okay, that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> that's what I'm gonna do. I just tell sorrow and oppression and sadness, you go back to that dump you've been living in. Don't come around here. You go on back to the hell from which you came. Don't try to bring your stuff around here. We over here in heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm living in the riches of his word. I don't have time for any other word. Come on. I'm living in the riches of what he said. I don't have any time for concern. Give me a break. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for your goodness. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. This comes to every dimension of your life. You just give to the Father. Just give you time, give you life, give you heart, give you affections, everything. Entrust him with your finances. He takes a little and multiplies it every time. That's just the way God does it. He just takes whatever little you give and he multiplies it where it's loaves and fishes. Or whether it's your finances, he takes what little you give and he multiplies it. He's always multiplying. Even if you give sparingly, he still multiplies it. Hey, even a sparing harvest is a multiplication. You hear me? Come on. Everybody gets to decide. Oh, give him your life. Give him every dimension of your affections because he's going to multiply heaven in them. Give him every dimension of your passion. Give him every... Come on, people. There's another pleasure center that people haven't discovered. There is a pleasure center in his presence. There's a pleasure center. Ha, ha, ha. At his right hand. There's a pleasure center. And obeying God and walking with God. Oh, Of hearing the Spirit of the Lord speak to you. Speak through you. Ha, ha, ha. Operate and move. There are people standing in this place today, you have not known how to escape the snares 
of the devil. I'm telling you, the power of God is here to empower you, to show you how the spirit of wisdom and revelation is here to empower you. There may be people here today, you've not had a transformed heart. You've never had a heart of affection that's come upon you that has caused you to delight to do the, way, the will of God. You maybe, maybe you've never been touched with the wonderful realms of the Spirit of the Lord that brings within your life the very person of Christ Jesus, the very life of Jesus. Today, that is here for the asking. That miracle is here for the asking. God will make a new creation. Everything old will go. Those wrong affections, those wrong desires, they will go. I'm telling you, they will go. Satan will come back with his interest, but you'll have authority and power to say, look, I'm having too good of a time with God. Get out of here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then, then I'm on Zebra. One of the great things about the, the redeemed heart that Father wants to give every person is it has a hatred for sin and godly sorrow begins to work as soon as there's any wrongdoing. Oh, you run immediately. You run immediately to Him with repentance in your heart. You know what repentance does? It brings you to a place of commitment. It does. To every day do what's right. And Papa gives us the power of repentance. Today, it's yours. The power of repentance changes you from an old person to a new person. From ugly to beautiful. Amen. He beautifies the meek with salvation. Meekness is say, look, I'm not going to live my own life the way I want to live it anymore. God has done such a wonderful work to come and be my personal guide, teacher, mentor. I'm going to I'm going to respond to him and allow him. If you've never surrendered your heart to Jesus in this place here today, if you've never turned your heart over to God, called upon His name, then today is the time to do it because there's a miracle waiting to happen. God the Holy Ghost will come upon you and you'll be born of the Word. You'll be born of the Spirit. You'll be born of the Father God, Almighty God. Christ Jesus be reproduced in you. Today, after so long a time as this, maybe you've heard many times and you've heard in your heart, in the name of Jesus, I command you to have a soft heart right now. <laughs> maybe the powers of darkness has so oppressed you, you don't even know what's right from wrong. Today, I tell you, wisdom and insight comes to your life. Maybe you don't know areas of your life that the world still marks you and hangs on you and you carry about on your body and in your life and in your actions, things that are purely of the world. God wants to give you an insight so that you just cut, sit, cut off from it, be cut off from it. Amen? Amen? Today, if there's anybody in this place, you want the miracle that only Christ Jesus can bring, I'm going to tell you, it's as simple as the asking. You come, we'll pray with you and for you. We'll stay on it till you know for certain your life has been transformed. And that's not where it ends. Hallelujah. That's where it begins. And it just gets brighter every day. Power of the Holy Ghost come on you. Baptize in His Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The utterances of heaven will begin to come issuing now to you. Hallelujah. A delight and a desire for the things of heaven will overwhelm you. We'll take you to a whole other dimension of living. Is there anybody here? You feel trapped? You feel imprisoned? Anyone? Anybody watching me by web or YouTube? You feel trapped or in prison? Christ Jesus, the deliverer, has come to set you free and He's here to free you right now. And it's, listen, it's going to be a radical change, but it's a good change. You're going to have to leave your sorrow and sadness to get yourself some joy and gladness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're going to have to leave your poverty and your misery to get yourself some riches and liberty. Hallelujah. I just ask everybody in this place, lift your hands towards heaven as you do. The power of the Holy Ghost comes on you. Fire of God. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Spirit of the Lord. The glory of heaven. The working of the mighty power of the living God. The working and operation of the Christ Jesus and the outpouring of the Spirit of the Lord. 
new affections, new emotions, new passions, new way of thinking, faith, insight, divine wisdom and revelation in Jesus' name. The outpouring of His love and His goodness. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Karina Manderesi Risusta. Hallelujah. Ha ha ha. Hallelujah. 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 Just let the Holy Ghost pour through you. Sikata Isheka. Oh, Mandele Keri Danjaro. Now, anybody got a problem with that, just come, I'll pray for you. Any guy, anybody got a problem? You can't say you've been to church if you haven't met with God. Hallelujah. Anybody got a problem with joy? You come, we'll pray for you. We'll get you, we'll get you, we'll let you, we'll get you right over into the artesian, the rivers of it. Amen. Anybody got sickness or disease in your body? Any problem at all whatsoever going on in your life? I mean, don't come with what? Don't come believing you're going to hold on to whatever it is you got. You need to come for something different. You need to come for something new. Hallelujah. We're here to be perfecters of your walk with God in every way we can to agree with you. In Jesus' mighty name. Listen, why don't you come, everybody, and worship the Lord with your tithes and with your offerings? And just watch as God works a miracle for you as you obey Him. Obey God and He'll work a miracle for you. Hallelujah. We, uh, let me just say this. We're getting ready to put the church up. No, I can, I can cast out devils and talk about what we're going to have for supper. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. Somebody said, well, you change the atmosphere. I ain't changing the atmosphere. It's still getting better. Amen. We're getting ready to put the church up. And so, you know, there's finances that we need to finish that. And those of you, I just pray that those of you that have pledged, go ahead and fulfill those pledges. Just step out, watch God work a miracle for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Because a miracle is going to come through you or it's going to come through me. <laughs> but the miracle is going to come. And we want you to be a part of the miracle. Praise God. What, what's going on right now is my dear, my dear friend, Pat Schatz lines going all over the United States of America c collecting pastors that are going to come have a gathering out at the church, the new building. And my goodness gracious, we've got to get the thing up first. I'm happy about it as well. Praise God. Hallelujah. Be able to speak into and minister to ministers and preachers. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hey, you know the power of God is here? Can you feel His presence? He's here. He's here. I'm telling you right now, if he would do some kind of demonic hindrance, holding back the flow, you would see me kicking the offering baskets over and turning over the speakers. Because huh? I'm going to have a move of God. I'm going to have God's presence in my life. I'm not going to commune with anything other than this wonderful realm. Amen. Hallelujah. He's here. He's here. The God that I know, He's here. God, the, the, God, the Lord Christ, and Savior Christ Jesus, He's here. God the Holy Ghost, He's here. God the Father's here too. Hallelujah. His healing supplies here, His empowerment is here. You know what He's going to do? You know what He's going to do? He's going to strengthen you to say no to the wrong things and yes to the right things. Is that simple enough for you? Hallelujah. He's going to strengthen you to say no to the wrong things and yes to the right things. I mean, just make it simple for you. You say no to the right, the wrong things and yes to the right things and you'll be blessed and you'll prosper. You say yes to the wrong things, I'm going to tell you right now, you're messed up. You'll get uglier by the day, I promise you. I don't care how much carrot juice you're drinking. I don't care how many, how many vitamins you're taking. You will listen to me. Huh? And I'm telling you, don't anybody act like looking good doesn't mean anything. Because it does, I'm going to tell you right now. Nobody wants to look like a monster. Sin will make you look monstrous. It will. It will. Praise God for the blood that cleanses us. 
I'm not listening to another thing Satan has to say. You know how you do that? Simply by obeying what God has to say. That's it. I don't even, I'm paying attention. A, a, a great man of God told me one time, said Satan is like a little child, little rebellious kid. The more attention you give him, the more he acts up. I give him very little. Only attention I give him is to tell him to get out of here, to leave pronto immediately and don't even think about coming back because I'm sealing it with the blood of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, people. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on. Come on now. Hallelujah. Come on now. Get busy. Get busy laying hold of all these good things in heaven. Thank you, Jesus. You tell, you standing here, up here, standing back there, some of you seated. Just ask Father, just tell Father what you want. Begin to talk to him about what's important to you. Begin to, you know, if you want to be successful, tell Father, I want to be successful. I have no plans on being a failure. I want to be successful in you, oh God. Because you can be successful in this world, and it, what does it matter if a man gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Jesus said, you lose your life and you can have mine. That's the same as saying, seek the kingdom of God and I'll give you everything. Come on. Come on, people. Come on, people. Satan runs his lies and his interference and all of this stuff. Jesus. I don't know as anyone really in New Covenant times achieved what Abraham achieved. To where he became a mighty prince in the earth and probably had, was probably more wealthy than any king or at least as wealthy as kings. He may have been one of the top 10 wealthiest people in the world. I don't know. I'm just saying that. He was, when God makes you wealthy, you're going to be big. You all right? Right? But yet we've not seen anybody achieve that. Well, I believe there's a press we got to press in. To. I believe there's a realm of hunger and thirsting and obedience to the law and the ways of God if we're going to get there. I believe we're going to have to walk all the way into what the models before said before us did and not compromise to have what they got in result. You, there's some of you got sickness in your body and the Lord's going to touch you and heal you right now. It's as, it's as easy as letting it go. I was praying for a woman the other day and she told me about her t couple of diseases she had. And I said, lift your hands towards heaven. She lifted her hands right up. She had forgotten that she couldn't lift her arm because she had just had been in an accident, broke two ribs and she couldn't move her arm. She forgot to tell me that one. It, pa it passed away from her mind because she forgot about it she was able to lift her hand and be instantly healed because she was standing in the presence of the Lord. Can, I hope that, I hope you can hear something. I said to the Lord after that meeting, I said, Lord, why is it? And the Father gave me some wisdom. I said, Father, why is it that she was instantly healed of broken ribs, but there was no manifestation of her healing for the other things that I know of or that she spoke of? And the Spirit of the Lord said, because she didn't own the broken ribs. The other two diseases were hers. The doctor said she had them. Pain said she had them. And everybody around her told her she had them. They were hers. Oh, my, 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 my. <laughs> what if the only things that you have is what God gave you and everything else isn't yours? Praise God. Hallelujah. God. When I was little, my mom would get a cold. I said, Mom, got a cold. She said, Nope, ain't mine. <laughs> we just laugh at her a little bit. It isn't mine. And it wouldn't be long she wouldn't have a cold. Praise the name of Jesus. It'd be gone past from her. It wasn't hers. Oh. I believe in for the days of revival to return again to the church. 
I'm believing for the days of great faith again to be seen. I'm believing again for tongues and interpretation of tongues. Be heard again in the midst of the Pentecostal people. I'm believing again for the body of Christ to begin to function because it's only defined by the operation of the gifts of the Spirit. I was just praying today this morning and, and, and just, you know, thinking about Debbie uh, Rich. Some of you know Debbie Rich. I just know Debbie Rich. She's asked me to come do their conference this year. And I was thinking this morning, you know what? I'm going to go over there. There's a bunch of Pentecostal people. And all I'm going to do is just see if we can get a bunch of people, Pentecostal people flowing in the gifts of the Spirit. Hallelujah. So just talking about a bunch of things that everybody already pretty much fully knows. Let's just go ahead and participate with the Holy Ghost. Come on, man. Come on, it's like we're, we're you know, come on. Let's, we're going to have to see some people mature in the things of the Spirit. It's just because the circumstances and the compromises have got us on hold from maturing. Many, many people are on hold from maturing because they conflicted. They compromised with the cares of this life, deceitfulness, deceitful, riches, pleasure in this world, fear, intimidation, rejection, hurt, concern, worry. Come on. I'm going to tell you right now, it's about sometimes somebody, God raises up, God raises up deliverers in Zion. You want their life? They're like the judges you read about in the book of Judges. Deliverers in Zion. Come say, look, man, we're not living on this thing no more. Ha! Hallelujah. Has an authority and a power to run all that mess off. Pakila Moshe. Ha! Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, you know, I see it. I see it happening. I tell you right now, God's able to do these things. I see a bunch of anointed men and women of God with great authorities in their life that have been discouraged by the, by the spirit of this world, by the powers of darkness. And I'm going to tell you right now, there's going to come a gathering of a people of God and an outpouring of the spirit of God that is going to liberate them from the things that have tried to in, in, imprison them and put them in a place of confinement. We will break the chains. We're going to break the chain. Somebody said, who do you think you are? Oh, I'll tell you who I think I am. I'm one born of the Spirit, baptized in the Holy Ghost, anointed by the power of God to stand up and do what God said to do. I'm, oh, God's looking for somebody to believe. He's not looking for golden vessels and silver vessels. God's looking for some empty vessels. He's not looking for some people who think they're mighty. He's looking for those who will allow Him to make them mighty. Come on now. Hallelujah. Those of you standing here, you ought to be getting healed about now. <laughs> he sends out his word. Hallelujah. Faith word, encouraging word, power word, life word, spirit word. Woo! Oh, it's like a river of life wherever it flows. It might be a desert, but it's going to be turned into a paradise, a garden like the garden of God. <laughs> Oh, let the Word of God flow to you. Let the Word of God come to you. Let the Word of God produce in your life those things which He sent forth His Word to bring to pass. Well, thank you, Lord Jesus. I see something good here. I see something good I haven't seen. I'm excited about it. And Father, I want you to watch over it and seal it and keep it. Come on, Shina Mahatea. Satan, you're, you have received an eviction notice for sure. Ha <laughs> ha. pahatea. Hallelujah. I see something good. I see something good. I see life and blessing and prosperity. Hallelujah. Now be strengthened. Hallelujah. Because the, the Lord will keep that which you committed unto him. Hey, will. Hallelujah. Yep, I see it. I see it. I see it. I see it. Father, I thank you right now. Just say it with me. Hallelujah. I thank you right now, Father, that you keep by your own word and by your own power that which has been committed unto you in this family. Hallelujah. People don't, take, don't care how long it takes you to get it. Just get it. It'd be better for you to get it sooner than later. Huh? Hallelujah. I've been pastoring for a long time. I know this. It's just people just stay with it. Just stay with it. We'll win. I tell you right now, I win. Just keep them in the meeting. Just stay in the meeting. I've already been guaranteed success in God. I'm telling you right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, you're not going to lose what you stepped into. 
You guys stepped into a move of God. You guys got revival going on in your life. You have something I'm not, I'm not seeing on you. And I'm very happy about it. And you need to be happy. I'm just, I'm <laughs> celebrating. I'm celebrating with the expression, just letting you know. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody said, are you speaking by faith? Not the way you think. When I speak by faith, I'm speaking by what I see in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah, that's faith for me. Hallelujah. Faith to me is seen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Huh? Are you listening to me? Hope's unseen. Faith seen. Ah. Ah. Hallelujah. I see something in the Spirit. Woo. Hallelujah. I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to talk about it. Because I'm going to tell you right now, faith in the words hooked up right, center, left, coming in, going out, before and after. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some people need to see a thousand people in the meeting to be happy. All I need to see is somebody get touched by the Lord Jesus. Be happy. Huh? Yeah. Come on. People's lives consecrated, submitted to God. Father, going to do great things through you. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I've heard over and again, many, many different ministers. Some of you, many of you heard actually recently when Joel Stockstill is here. Over and again, say great ministries come out of this place. It's, it's going to happen. And I'm talking about you. Tell about the ministry God's going to do in your life. Amen. Say, great ministries. He's, Joel was prophesying. He said, I can see it like this. I meet a person, a great ministry. I say, where you come from? A buying place. Then I went to the next place. I met another person, great ministry. Where you come from? A buying place. And it went on and on like this. That he was seen in the things of the Spirit. You see, listen, I believe that about you. I don't care where you at right now. I don't care what's going on in your life. I see one turn into a thousand. I see a thousand. I see, th see 10,000. Some people I see more. I see what he's I see a troop. I see a troop. I see a troop raised up in the kingdom of God. Not to follow you, not to follow me. Follow him. I see troops. Troops. Whole armies. Where do you want to be? In the back row in the kingdom of God? If you're in the front row in the kingdom of darkness, you are not even in the rows of the kingdom of God. But I'd rather be on the back row than not to be on any row. Huh? But I'm going to tell you right now, you get on the back row, you ain't going to be happy with the back row. You want to be right front and center. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Right front and center. Hallelujah. I'm not looking to how much earth I can have and still make heaven. I'm looking to how much heaven can be manifested in me and through me while I'm here on earth. Ah, she parate kasht. And so are you. Oh, you mighty woman of God. Hallelujah. Mon to see. Do not reason nor think or try to interpret what you think is going on in your life. But let the dictionary define you. God's word. And everything else, you turn a deaf ear to it. You rise up in the authority and the spirit of the Lord, Brittany of the, of the Lord. I'll say to you, in Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus Christ, <laughs> you be strengthened by the spirit. Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, every part of your body and every part of your being, under the blessing and the grace and the goodness of Almighty God, I speak strength and health, health to every part of you. Soul, spirit, mind, thinking. Ha ha. Ha ha ha. They made us day. You hear, listen to me. I've got medicine. I'm going to prescribe it to you. It's the word of God. The spirit of the Lord. It's the joy. Ha 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 ha. And the regesse The moti. It's the regesse bravat. The Destinia, the Sinalo, the Jatamo, the Ripana, Shida. Setuto Rototi Telina, Testi Aranata, the Jestu Palania, the joy. The joy of his salvation. 
the joy of his love for us. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Man bound the day yesterday. It's not everybody gets an angel appear to them and say, Go to the abiding place. I reckon you're in the right spot. I reckon you should know that. Ha! My name is Sito Lomongaya. John walked in here and the power of God touched him and was cured almost instantly of one of the most, un most incurable diseases on the planet. Extreme type 1 diabetes. The enemy will come harass you, torment you, try to take everything God gave to you away from you. And he does it all with his lies, his threats, his fears, his false accusations, his condemnation. People, you get out of condemnation, you'll step into great miracles and signs and wonders because it's a fellowship divine. It's true. This a week. Look, God's got a great call on every person in this life, in this person, in this place. Every person in this place, God's got a great call upon your life, and you've got to learn how to stand up against the threats and the accusations of the enemy, and be valiant. God wants to make you valiant. Makes us valiant with His word. And look at what God's done for your two children. Isn't that beautiful? Now I call in the blessing, the provision of God into your life. I call him, I call her in. I wasn't gonna say that, but I thought I was gonna keep it covert, but it just came out. I call her in. You need listen, Papa looks at a man and says he needs a wife. I like how Brother Yun does it. He finds two people in a place that need want to get married and he says, Look, come over here. Hey, do you like her? Hey, do you like him? Okay, well, good. Why don't you guys get married? We can do it this afternoon. I've not got that particular special kind of gifting, but, you know, it's pretty interesting to watch. What do you want? What do you believe you can have? What do you want? Obviously, you want something. It's got to be something. What do you mean you want Jesus? You already have him. Okay. Father, we thank you for the spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge of you in Jesus' name. What do you want? Huh? What's going on in your body? What's happening in your body? Well, don't worry about the strongholds of the enemy. Don't even worry about them. You, you may tell you how God does these things. Because we learn how to worship and praise Him. Huh? He messes the whole works up. As soon as you, that the, he messes everything up, the plan of the enemy, when we just begin to worship and praise Him. In the name of Jesus, look at me. In Jesus' name, a new beginning for you in God. A joy and rejoicing. Okay? Now, I've been trying to talk you into joy and rejoicing now for some time. <laughs> okay. A new beginning. New expressions. Did you know that God wants to create new emotional expressions in you? He does. He wants to, he wants to create within you a thanksgiving and a joy and a rejoicing that you've never had. And out of it will come a rich supply of the expression of diverse tongues of the Holy Ghost. It's true. I know you've been through a lot, but you know what? They don't matter nothing. It doesn't mean nothing. And I have no sympathy for it. You know why? 
because I know the great things that God's purpose to give you. And that's all I'm interested in and all you should be interested in. Do you understand that? If you want to sit around and console and sympathize and empathize, you're going to get nothing from God there. You will not. It's human realm occupied by devils. It's true. It's true. In Jesus' name, right now, by the power of the living God, everything about the expression of your life, expression of your heart, begins to change. Where there was sorrow and sadness, there's going to be joy and gladness. In the name of Jesus, where there was doubt and unbelief, there's going to be faith and confidence. Now in Jesus' name, I speak to your body and I command it to be healed. Right now in Jesus' name. Now, obey me now in Jesus' name. Ha. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lay a hand on your stomach. Lay a hand right there on your stomach. What's been happening in your stomach, in the lower parts of your stomach? Thank you, Jesus, for health right here. Huh? In the name of Jesus. Huh? See todo monde este caroma. Este vilai. He is a, is it in your womb or is it in your bladder? Sicoristi, huh? Loca de este prota. In the name of Jesus. Speak healing to you. Speak healing to you. Let me just ask you. So, what, what do you, what do you, what do you think God's going to do for you? What is, what, what is your, what does your life look like from this moment forward? Because I, you know, you could get, you it could get muddled by all these things that you're, that you're going through and that you're having to deal with. But what does your life look like? What does your life look like from this moment forward? What does it look like? It looks like authority and power in Christ Jesus. Doesn't it look like that? Authority and power in the Holy Ghost, the things of heaven being made manifest through you? Well, if you'll lay hold on that, let these things fill your heart and mind. I tell you, these things around us, they really are strong influence to buy for our attention, aren't they? They are. In Jesus' name, no more. Look at how Father's answering all your prayers. Isn't it amazing? Huh? You reckon he's going to do something with your life? I think he is. In fact, I know he is. What do you want? <laughs> what do you want? Huh? You know what? I would if somebody if somebody tried to give me somebody gave me a challenge to try to express. One of the primary things that God the Holy Ghost does for us when we fully yield ourselves to Him, I would say that one of the primary things is He moves us out of self-consciousness into God-consciousness. Where all the things that have become of concern and issue to us, no matter have, it, have no more impact, no more effect, make no difference. You just Bold. God consciousness. God confidence. Yes. Huh? <laughs> Listen. Jason. Jason. You need to see these things already done. 
It's not your imagination. Read the book. <laughs> every question, look it up in the dictionary. Uh, every word you don't understand, everything about your life you don't understand, look in the dictionary. Jesus' name, great boldness in the faith. Great boldness, great confidence in the faith. Great confidence. There is no gift that you bring to the Father that He rejects. You listen to me. You hear me? There's no gift you bring to the Father that He rejects. It's not about what people think. It's about what the Father thinks. You bring the gifts of your heart to the Father. And I promise you, all the rest will take care of itself. <laughs> There's nothing so beautiful, nothing that expresses the glory of heaven more effectively than a person bringing the gifts of their heart to the Father. And nobody else is even involved. You with me? I don't have an audience standing around while I'm kissing my wife and then turn to them and say, how, how did, that, did that look right? I'm not interested in everybody's opinion. Are you listening to me? Are you with me? So it is with the Lord. So it is with the Lord. So it is with Him. Hallelujah. And when it's true and it's sentiment and it's from your heart, everybody else is going to be impacted by it. I promise you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody <laughs> Get up, find somebody, tell them that you love them, hug them, bless them in Jesus' name. If you're down on the ground, don't get up. Thank you, Jesus.